talk about the loose items in the vehicle. Along here, inside the vehicle, you'll see a backpack that appears. It's a little hard to see, but if you take a look real close, you'll see that that backpack will flop around there and it will hit people. It hits Bob upside the head a little bit. It'll hit little Bob Jr. Bob gets it again. The baby gets it too, doggone it, so we're going to let you know about it today. So, inside here, if you let these guys spin around here, they're going to get hurt a little bit. Now I'm going to prop this up. This is simulating a 30 mile per hour rollover crash. You get it going a little bit just to see how fast 30 miles an hour is. There it is. You'll see it. This is a 30 mile per hour rollover crash. Now, just let, I'm going to give you guys a little mathematical equation. Everybody say this with me. Say speed. Speed. Times weight. Times weight. Equals force. Equals force. This is a 30 mile per hour crash. The backpack inside weighs about 10 pounds. Okay? Weighs about 10 pounds. So, with that, 30, 30 miles an hour times 10 pounds of weight, how much force would that hit something? About 300 pounds. 300 pounds of force. That's almost how much I weigh. How about we? <laughs> so, you wouldn't want me stepping on your toe, I guarantee you that. So, Trooper Rafferty's going to set him up a little bit and roll the windows down. And as he's doing that, let's go to school for a little bit. You guys want to go to school with me? No. Sure. All right, let's go to school for a little while. All right. As he's, as he's uh, un unbuckling, he's not unbuckling, but uh, taking my backpack out and setting them up and rolling the windows down, we're going to go to school for a little while. Anybody familiar with Newton's Law? What is Newton's Law? Everybody familiar with the first, the very first one? Uh, yeah, come here. You're the guy with the glasses. You should know this. Oh, that's the song, I think. I don't know. Uh, let's, his very first law. Uh, I think that was the third Motion. Law. Motion. What's your name first? Uh, is it objects that I lost it? Let me see. Let me see your glasses it's for the, a second. It's the pressure, I think. It's, like it's the pressure. All right, I'm gonna try this. All right, let's try this. And. Object in motion tends to stay in motion at the original speed until acted upon by an outside force. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Does that sound familiar? Very good then. Thank you very much. I had to get rid of my country accent to sound intelligent. <laughs> All right, an object in motion will tend to stay in motion at the original speed until acted upon by an outside force. What that means is if it's going, it's, it's going to keep going until something stops it. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit. I'm going to spin these guys around. Like I said, this is a 30 mile per hour crash. Now, if this is going 30 miles an hour, everything in it is going 30 miles an hour. The backpack, if it stays in there, is going 30 miles an hour. Bob, Bob Jr. is going 30 miles an hour. Everything in here is going 30 miles an hour. Now, if there's an abrupt stop, all, all, there, all a crash is, this is, a crash is an abrupt stop. They, they, dang, I'm getting time tied here. An abrupt stop is, something that causes a transference of kinetic energy. That's what a crash is. Excuse me. That little mixed up. A uh, crash is something that uh, is an abrupt stop that causes a transfer of kinetic energy. So what we're looking at is if I have to stop this, it's going to slow down, the gears are going to wind, they're going to be okay. Now Trooper Raffer is going to buckle these guys, unbuckle these guys here. So, and we're going to talk about what, how many crashes, there, how many collisions there is in the crash and what types of crashes there are. Now, as I said before, a crash is an abrupt stop that causes a transference of kinetic energy. That's what that is. I didn't have my glasses on. I didn't have my free access. That's what messed me up. Now, that's what that is. Now, there are three collisions in the crash. Everybody hold three fingers up and say three. There are three collisions in the crash. And there are five different types of crashes. Hold five fingers up, wiggle them a little bit, say five. five. All right, let's talk about the five different types of crashes. There are five different types of crashes. There is the frontal collision. There is the side angle collision, or the T-bone better known as. There is the rear end collision. There is the rollover collision that we're talking about right now. And there is a non-contact collision. That non-contact collision is spin, skids, and swerve. Those things that are caused abrupt stops. Okay. All right, there are three collisions in a crash. The first collision is the vehicle hitting whatever it's going to hit. It could be another vehicle. It could be a tree. People, we live in Nebraska. It could be a cow, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but it is a collision. Now, the second collision is the loose items colliding around inside. Loose people, loose backpacks, loose laptops, loose athletic equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then, the internal, uh, wall, then uh, your internal organs collide with the walls of your body. That's the third collision. Where seatbelts come into play is 
the second collision portion. Hopefully that second collision is with your seatbelt. It helps you to ride out the crash, keeps you in place where you're supposed to be. Therefore, it re reduces the risk of injury when your internal organs start to collide, okay? Now, we're all gathered here. We, we talked about several things. Let's recap a little bit. We, talk, we know that loose items go in a safe place, right? All loose items go in a safe place, depending on where it is in your vehicle. Then, we, need to, we know that there are how many collisions in a crash? Three. Very, how many types of crashes? Five. Very good. Newton's Law, we talked about that. Got it? Get it? Good. Yeah, I remembered it now. Got it. You're right. Now, the two people are all gathered here, one accord, one place to see one thing. You want to see what happens with, when you're not wearing your seatbelt, correct? Correct. correct? You want to see Bob and Bob Jr. fly out of here and hurt themselves. You sick. <laughs> all right, here's what's going to happen. You want to come up here? You want to be my assistant? You want to count to three for me? What's your name again? Nakaya. Come here, Nakaya. Woo! All right, Nakaya, stand right there. Here's what's going to happen. My little buddy Nakaya here is going to count to three. And you guys are going to yell. I'll repeat, yell, spin it. Got it? Get it? Good. Nakaya, you want to count to three for me? All right. right now. <laughs> and he just keeps on taking it. Oh, there he is. Oh. All right, he is done right now. Now, what you just experienced was a partial ejection first. Everybody give the guy a big hand. There you go, sweetie. All right, now, real quick, I forgot to do something here. The vehicle was rolling this way. I meant to do my matrix pose. Can I do that for you? All right, which way was the vehicle rolling? Left. Over this way, right? Yes. Yeah. You're right, my left. Where's Bob laying? Right there. And so the vehicle was rolling over top of Bob, correct? Right. So here's the thing. We can't predict which way Bob and Bob Jr. is going to come out here. Each time is very different. Each crash is different. You can't predict where you're going to land either. You can land on the cement. You can land in a cornfield. You may stay in the car and just continue to flop around there on top of people. As a matter of fact, if you were to look, you see that Bob even landed on his own son in there. So parents, good parents, where you at? Good parents. What will you do as a good parent? You're going to wear your seatbelt. But you would protect your children, right? So if you choose not to protect yourself and you neglect your child, you also neglect your children. I will tell you that all good parents will always, always, always do something to protect their child. They will, and if they do something that's unsafe, they will beat them with an inch of their life to make sure they don't ever do that unsafe thing ever again, right? Right. I would just let you guys know the rest of the patrol is that you beat your children. Uh, our motto is if you don't beat your children, we will. Ah, oh, I digress. But you saw all this fun stuff. Bob came out, the vehicle rolled over on top of Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just letting you know the key thing is your chances of survival increase. Everyone say increase. Increase. Increase by 50%. 50% for taking that extra couple of seconds to wear your seatbelt. So, all this information to get you to do two things. Number one, loose items in a safe place. Number two, wear your seatbelt. You think you can do that for me? Yeah. All right, everybody raise your right hand and make me a promise. Everyone say, I promise. I promise. From this day forward. From this day forward. To always. To always. Wear my seatbelt. Wear my seatbelt. put loose items. Put loose items. In a safe place. In a safe place. And I will place. make. And I will make. Everyone else in the vehicle. Everyone else in the vehicle. Do the same. Do the same. Because I love them. Because I love them. Talk to yourself. Say, I love me. I love me. My favorite part. That's a little biblical uh, passage that says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So I command all of you to make sure that you wear your seatbelt and put loose items in a safe place. Now point at me and say I love you. I love, I love you. you. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hope you find your dream car today. Otherwise, join, enjoy the Midlands 2011 Midlands Auto Show. Thank you. Thank you. I knew that.